Can I have a, a show of hands? How many of you have considered what will happen when you die? It's a couple, that's good. Have you thought about who's going to give you the care that you need? Think about that for a moment. You see, death is seen as this big taboo. We don't think about it, we don't talk about it. Which is strange, really, because it's inevitable. By 2066, Australia is predicted to have up to 49.2 million people. And based on that, we will see over 430,000 deaths that year. To put that in a little perspective for you, that's an increase of over 154% from the number of deaths recorded in 2019. While figures like these are causing some people to ask, what do we do with all of those dying people potentially in need of care? And that's a good question. It makes me wonder, in addition to that, what do we do with all of the dead? Our medical system is already stretched. We don't have the doctors, the nurses, the palliative care wards, the hospice programs, the aged care workers, the places in nursing homes, the funeral homes to cope with the numbers predicted to die in the next four decades. Radical and innovative thinking is required if we're going to cope and still deliver on the best possible end-of-life outcomes for the dying and their families. One of the answers to this is moving dying and death back into the home. Approximately 70% of Australians say they would like to die at home. Only about 14% are currently achieving that. Doesn't seem quite right, does it? And I wonder how you'd feel if I said, of that 70%, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to die at home and stay at home. It's how it always used to be. In the last 120 years, we've lost over 5,000 years of knowledge about caring for our dead. Each and every one of you sitting in this room is capable of caring for your people in death as you do in life. It's safe, it's legal, it's possible, and it fundamentally changes what it means to grieve in this world. My family and I choose what's known as home funeral when our people die. Home funeral. My work here in Tasmania is encouraging and supporting other people to do the same. Family-led funerals and home-based death care have always been possible. And as a society, we are slowly rediscovering the empowerment that comes with reclaiming this ancient knowledge. What I'd like to share with you today are three steps into the heart of home funeral. Step one. Redefine what we consider a funeral to be. Step two, recalibrate our expectations of what a funeral can do. And step three, reimagine the grief and bereavement outcomes that follow. Step one, into the heart of home funeral is to redefine what we consider a funeral to be. When I talk about home funeral, I mean any action, intention, ritual or ceremony designed to remember and honour the dead that takes place anywhere a person feels they belong. Home funeral can be where you live, but it doesn't have to be. Over the course of society, a funeral has become this one to two hour ceremony where things are placed largely in the hands of professionals. 
home funeral asks, what if it could be more than that? The first person we ever looked after at home was my great aunt Ethel and she was followed a few short months later by her sister, my grandmother Gladys. Both of those ladies had very standard conventional prepaid funerals that they'd taken out decades ago. It didn't stop us taking them home. Over those days at home, we spent time with them and with each other. We washed and dressed them. We talked about how best to honour their lives. We decided on private ceremonies, full of love. We made photographic montages and designed memorial booklets. We picked catering. We bought bottles of my grandmother's favourite wine. And we wrote. We wrote the ceremony and our tributes. We gathered musicians to play their favourite tunes. We knew that we didn't need a coffin that it wasn't a legal requirement here in Tasmania, but we chose recycled paper coffins made here on the island. And for Nana, we picked it up with just an undercoat so that we could personalise it for her. Over those days, as the layers of paint went on, the layers of our grief began to knit us together. We talked, we laughed, we cried, we shared stories... My mum had the idea of putting doves on the coffin and that became the canvas for people to write their farewell messages to the most exquisite of ladies. We did everything we could to honour those women and we took our time doing it. When someone dies, there's always time. The whole process for Nana and Aunt was a cathartic experience that we would not have changed for the world. Our home funeral wasn't just a ceremony. It was every day we had with them and everything we did for them. And it was perfect. (laughs) Perfect. That takes us to step two into the heart of home funeral. Recalibrating our expectations of what a funeral can do. Home funeral will always be perfect. Now, that's a pretty lofty expectation, wouldn't you agree? (laughs) Perfect doesn't mean polished and professional. It doesn't mean that everything will go to plan and nothing will ever go wrong. But it's perfect because as a family and a community, you get to make the journey from death to farewell, the family and community experience it can and should be. You get to weave your own love, your deep sense of gratitude and privilege into the making of a home funeral. I started in the funeral industry 11 years ago and I've learnt a great many things from a great many people in that time. One of the earliest and best lessons I ever learned was to encourage people to slow things down, to consider how long people spend making the celebrations that mark the milestones of life, the weddings, the christenings, the 21st birthdays, the engagements, and to consider that the funeral is the final milestone. It doesn't have to be done and dusted in three days. You see, before the funeral industry, there was home funeral. Death care, the how-to of caring for those who have died, up until about 120 years ago, was always a shared community knowledge and a responsibility that we, as a society, freely undertook. Even in my grandmother's time, she remembered bundling up parcels of food and taking them to the homes of neighbours when someone died because, as a community... They gathered, they mourned together, they grieved and spent time with the dead. In the rush 
of our very busy lives. That's an all but faded tradition. But what's really been lost? Let me tell you what's been lost is the knowledge, the confidence and the belief in our own human capacity to care for each other at end of life. I've learnt a lot working with the dead. And what I know to be true is to spend time with someone who has died is the most humbling, life-affirming gift you can give yourself, them and each other. Something happens when you spend time with the dead. It is a profound experience to wash and dress someone's body, to sit and hold the hand of someone you've known in life and notice the breath missing from them. Those experiences change people. They make grief and bereavement more gentle. Those moments are extraordinary. And they encourage us to live better. That's what you can expect from home funeral. A year ago, my dad, Steve, he chose to depart this world on his own terms. And although he'd been unwell, his decision to die was a shock. In the three days that it took for him to draw his last breath... We took turns sitting vigil with him at the hospital. As a family, we had to come to terms with our lives being forever different. And we had some important decisions to make. People to notify, funeral arrangements to consider, but most importantly, how we were going to go about taking him home. Now, when Dad died, he entered the care of the coroner. And two days later, his body was released. My son and I drove to the mortuary at the Royal Hobart Hospital and we brought him home. He stayed at home with us for a further five days. Over the course of those days, as people came and went, they got to take a leaf from the garden that he loved and stencil it onto the coffin that would hold him for his final journey. With each new addition, someone else's hands gave love and support to him and to us. We spent those days with photos and memories and our dad. We talked to family, some we hadn't spoken to in years. A friend came and made casts of Dad's hands so that we could hold them in the months and years to come. Another friend came and did flowers and made displays of things for us that were meaningful to Dad. Now, he was a community-spirited fellow and despite being shy, he loved people. So we chose to have a public ceremony in a place familiar to him. We wrote the ceremony. We invited others to contribute. There were a lot of people who wanted to pay respects to him. We wrote. We cried. We laughed. But we spent time together. Every step of that journey was hard. so hard. We sat in silence with his death when we needed to. We let the noise surround us when we needed that as well. Recalibrating our expectations of what a funeral can do allowed us to create the space for the things that sustained us. The whole process was moved from bearable to beautiful because we had the opportunity to care for our dad ourselves. So once you have redefined what a funeral can be 
and you've recalibrated your expectations of it. The third step into the heart of home funeral is to reimagine the grief and bereavement outcomes. Now, dying is quite rightly starting to be seen as a social event rather than a medical one. And one of the most promising introductions into this space are the growing number of end-of-life doulas, death walkers and home funeral guides who have a collective desire to better the grief and bereavement outcomes for their fellow community members. And it's paying off. People have more agency in their dying now than they ever did. And with the introduction of advanced care directives and the uptake of enduring guardians and powers of attorney, the place for that agency is being cemented well into our society. But let me remind you that all of that agency ends with a person's final breath. Home funeral suggests it doesn't have to. I want you to imagine a society where people come together to care for their dead, and in doing so, deep bonds are woven between them. There is this genuine sense of achieving something unique and special when people gather to care for the dead. And those shared experiences are the basis for true and lasting networks of care. People's grief and bereavement are vastly different inside those networks. Home-based death care, family-led funerals have always been possible. It's safe, it's legal, it is an empowering choice for you and your families. By redefining what you consider a funeral to be, by recalibrating your expectations of it, you can not only reimagine the grief and bereavement outcomes that follow, you can experience them. So I want to encourage each and every one of you here today, when someone dies, take the time. Spend time with them, care for them, be it for a few hours or a few days. Your lives will be made richer, your grief more gentle by each tiny, tiny moment spent in service of your dead. May you all bravely step into the heart of home funeral. Thank you. <laughs>